Phil, you're up next. Hello. Hey, Bart. How's it going? Pretty good. Awesome. Um, so this hand is from Lucky Chances in San Francisco. It's the one two two game. One dollar on the button. It's three hundred max. One two one two two. Three hundred max. This is one of these ones that's dro- raked the hell out of, and I would encourage you to get out of this game. <laughs> it's a seven dollar rake. Yeah, I think I sent you an email about this. Actually, the reason that I'm playing this game is that. I I have like money set aside to play poker with and I just don't have an, like if I go and gamble with a thousand dollars and I have like two thousand in my poker money I'm just not going to play well so for me it's like it's more of like a mental thing and I'm saving up money for my job to like have money in a poker account so here's, that here's I can my t- here's go my t- and play three five right mm-hmm. I I mean I understand that but here's my take on that and I've I've said this many times on the flagship podcast too. The only times that I really recommend playing at a level like this with a drop structure like this is if you're new to live poker and you just want to like get into the ex- experience of like, you know, handling the chips, some of the live shenanigans that can go on, you know, you want to be down there a couple of weeks. The problem with playing it any sort of longer than that is, first of all, a game is almost unbeatable. Now, may- and what I mean by that is like, maybe you could beat it for like five, 10 bucks an hour. You can't really save that much money doing it. You You can sort of do the math out. And if you truly did want to play this game for maximum profit, Man, it the style would be just so so boring, especially with large open sizes. I'm talking about unless you're getting really deep. Like you play like less than ten percent of your hands. It would be insane. I do, and it's I do wow, play okay. less than ten percent of my more, hands. More power to you, though. No, <laughs> I, it's, uh... I mean, I, I mean, there there are times when I probably play it poorly. Honestly, I mean, I am a recreational player, and I have won money in the past in poker, but it's more fun for me to sit down with $300 at a 1-2 game than mm-hmm. at a 3-5 game. And Joey, Joey Pigtails, Joey Pigtails, who we used in the uh, double board video, I might use a couple more of his hands. He's got a vlog. Joey Pigtails says, short buy 2-5. That's what I say. You know, if you're going to full buy for 300, go up and buy, you know, 300 for 2-5, especially if you're accustomed to playing 10% of hands, it's going to be the same style. You'll see that the player's yeah. not that much better, although maybe at Lucky Chances, 2 five's the biggest game, so it could be a thing. Well, the problem with the 2-5 game there is that they're all... So they have a kill thing, which is you can strap any position, right. and they play win or kill almost every game. So it's playing for 30 blinds. You can print in that game. Though. I got to tell you, you can you can print in that game. Yeah, you can print in that game. Like, it's just not as fun. Like, I, Well, you, you don't know, get I'm to saving... play. I mean, your, your play is all pre Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm breaking even in this one two game and I'm Which saving five hundred to a thousand dollars a month for my job okay. and in a few months I'm gonna have enough money to like okay. n- to like buy in for five hundred or buy in for a thousand and you feel might, good about it. You so, might be the only guy think, that's breaking even in the game. I mean that's probably a really good win rate. <laughs> <laughs> um I, maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. It's terrible. It's a seven dollar drop. They take yeah. two pre flop and then one by the river. One extra like five uh two, four and then one on the river. So, and again, this is yeah, not a rake, they take the entire you up. Okay, so yeah, do- they, it's it's terrible. So I'm 750 here. Um, the players are really, really bad. So I I, I've actually noticed this 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 game. It's like significantly worse even than the one three at Matrix, the one three at Grayton, and definitely worse than the than the three five. They're like really bad. But regardless, so um, one two two. And but, it's five dollars to come in. By the way, too, you also the other annoying thing about these setups is you tend to see a disproportionate amount of ultra short stacks in this game, like guys with fifty bucks. Way more short stacks there than are, usually like the level yeah. above. There are. I usually table change to a to a place where everyone has like three hundred plus, except maybe one or two. So usually it's okay on that. So regard, it's five. To, it's five yeah. to come in. So you have to limp for five. That's interesting. Okay. You have to limp for five. Yeah, exactly. And then you can kill it for five, and then it's ten to come in. Um and yeah. So anyway, this one was not was not killed. Okay. Um. So it's just straight one two two and the. Um, plus one limps for five, the hijack limps for five. I'm in the cutoff with king of hearts, queen of spades, and I make it 25. My standard opens 15, and then I just throw in five. Um, so, per, per limp. so uh, two limps, hero goes king, queen in the cutoff, right? King of hearts, queen of spades at 25, okay. Um, the big blind calls and the two limpers call, so there's 100 in the pot. So big blind calls and limpers call, and we're off to the flop four ways. Flop four ways, a hundred bucks. Okay. Um, yeah. Flop is queen of clubs, of hearts, 
six of spades. You broke up there in the middle. Queen of clubs, what? Jack of hearts. Mm-hmm. Six of spades. So queen, jack, six, you got top pair. It's a rainbow board, but we know that people love to play offsuit broadways. Okay. Yeah. So people have played offsuit broadways and these guys like could have ace queen. It's possible. I'm not going to play thinking that they do, but like it actually is possible. They are crazy, crazy. Um, yep. Um, Limp call, cold call. Um, yeah. No, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so check, check, check. I bet 60 targeting draws and queens and jacks and honestly i think most queen like all queens i think most jacks and every like open-ended draw at least is going to call me yeah and i would tend to and i would tend to sort of use lar- uh, exploitively at a, a super small stakes level i would exploitably use a larger c bet sizing multi-way for value and maybe a smaller one for, as a bluff i mean no one's going to exploit you so yeah. <laughs> here goes 60 okay yeah, exactly yeah the big blind calls and the other two fold so next act calls yeah. And right. a little bit of that. And this is pretty strong because so really, really quick hand history on this guy. I've played a bunch with him. I have three bet him pre and then he's folded Jack's face up on nine, four, three. Like I like he just folded. He's like, oh, you have Jeez. aces. And I didn't. But <laughs> I've seen him do that. Wow, that's I've crazy. seen him call me. Is this like an old man coffee type? Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I've seen him call me. I mean, he's very limp happy. So he's in a ton of pots. He'll like limp call and like limp cold call three bets. But when he like, he just like does not raise unless like he had, and and I've seen him like on a flop where I was like, I I, like triple barreled with aces on a board where I should have the nut flush and the flush, like a backdoor flush came in and he didn't raise me with the second nut flush or something. When we had like Mm -hmm. a lot behind too, we have like, you know, I don't know. So that just hand hits. This guy's like a total mitt. Okay. Um, So 220 to the turn. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 220, 220 on the um, uh, and the turn is a two of diamonds. So brick, total brick. Queen jack six um, deuce. So, okay. So I'm still hoping I'm ahead, and maybe this is too late because he totally could have ace queen. But I bet 100. I think that I'm trying to get a call out of a queen or out of nine ten mm-hmm. or king ten. And he calls. And he calls. So let me let, let me ask you a question. So I assume this is just a bet fold for you. I mean, because you know yeah, that the back, whole time it's a bet fold for me. That backstory, because I mean, it would be th- that's one thing for somebody to play scared, like with the second nut flush versus nut flush. But the same types of players that play scared are scared of getting a bad beat. So I would be surprised if a guy could somehow balance a trap here and like just be calling with sixes or calling with queen jack. So. Maybe it's a, I don't know if you've ever seen him slow play, like ultra slow play, but uh, that's kind of the category that usually people would fall into. So when he does just call here, I think, and I do, I do think a bet is warranted. That's fine. We can talk about whether you want to go through streets or not, but when he does just call here, yeah, I don't think he's got more than one pair. Now mm-hmm. the backstory here, could he have ace queen? You know, you'd much rather have aces here or Kings, right? Than, than, uh, than yeah. King queen. But okay. So now we're at yeah. uh 420, 420. 420, the river is a seven of clubs. Another total brick. Seven of clubs. That is a brick because no straights, nothing. I mean, there's just nothing there, right? Yep, okay. Queen, jack, six, deuce, seven. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I decide to go thin and bet another 100. So big blind checks. Yeah, he checked. Okay, let's talk about what I would do here at the end. Um... You know, if you didn't tell me that backstory, I would go three streets here for sure. For absolutely for sure. There's just the players are so, so bad at this level. And it really depends on some of the showdowns that maybe I had sort of noticed, like are people playing like suited queens? Because the more people are, and he's already in for two, even though you made it 25, which is ridiculous. Some of I'm in for two, so I'm going to put 23 in. Maybe he plays like queen five suited out of the big line and fold. I think he would. I think he would. You think yeah. he's going to play queen five? If you think he's going to play all those, like, if you think, this is like a pattern show today, if you think he's the type of player that is that wide where he's playing queen eight suited, queen nine suited, I would imagine that he's probably playing like queen 10 off suit. So if he has those hands and he's not like an uber knit pre, and it doesn't sound like he, he, he sounds like he's an uber knit no. post. So he's an uber knit yeah. post, but not pre then you, you probably beat more hands than you lose to. Are you going to value on yourself against ace-queen? Sure. I mean, if you had ace-queen, it's a slam dunk bet, right? But I mean, if you think he has those other hands, then I would bet again. 
And the question then just becomes like sizing because if he's always going to call with a queen, no matter what the sizing, the theory would say you should just move all in or, or however much you have left, right? I mean, you had like, you know, 500 left, you almost a pot size bet all in, right? Now we know that maybe that's not the reality, but if that was the case, if this guy was playing that wide and he's always calling with a queen, you would want a max bet here. You are going to value own yourself. So why did you decide to go 100 in, instead of like um, not I was spending? thinking I was thinking that he might actually fold those smaller queens if I bet bigger. I didn't okay. think that that makes I sense. Thought, I mean, that, I thought, like, that would be that yeah. would be the answer that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was kind of putting. I don't know that he would go. I think queen eight and queen nine suited he plays because you can make a straight with them or something. I don't know if he goes lower than that. I also lose to like three of those <laughs> smaller ones, but. Um, here, yeah, but let me, I mean, like, was, all right, so here's the issue that I have with your sizing. I think I can get, I can kind of get on board with what you're saying. Maybe if you go like crazy, he might fold. Cause you said, you, you know, he folded Jack, Jack, right? Post like on a, on a thing. But I will say though, that I think betting 200 will get the same uh, range of calls from inferior Queens than betting 100. I actually think you can go up to 200 or 250 even. So that's where I would break from you here. Okay. So maybe bet like 200 on the river. Yeah, 200, 200, 250, something like that. But okay, so you bet 100. Okay. Uh-huh. And and he tanks and tanks and tanks, and then he, and then he goes, and he goes, oh, well, I'm too uh, – he's like, oh, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not good enough to fold. And he calls, Uh-oh. and I turn over my head, and he has queen jack offsuit for a wow. top two pair and is somehow afraid that I have a set. I didn't really know. Like, it wasn't a tank like it- – so it's not that he's like he he's like one of the so he's not slow playing he's just scared of just everything. Yeah, he's just totally scared exactly. And then my question is, so now am I definitely going way too thin once I see that showdown against this player? Well, I mean, it's hard to if sort he's of ex- thinking about folding queen jack, then how am I going to get called by, even for 100 by like Yeah, I mean, we have to make a lot of a different show. Well, we have to make a lot of different assumptions. You can count the combos out. I mean, here's the thing like yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, that's another set of hands that you lose to, right? Like, if it's Queen Jack, and then how yeah. often is he calling with inferior queens? And I can believe what you're yeah. saying, that this guy is just playing scared. I'll tell you why probably all that, you've seen that history and why he's doing that. And again, it goes to why you should depolarize the river. Because almost, I would I would say, if you're a break-even player at the cell, you're probably the, one of the best players in the pool, if not the best player in the pool. 99.9% of people in your spot are not going to bet king queen at the end. They might not, and probably like 90% aren't betting one pair, like even aces. Yeah. So yeah. when the other players see that and you bet and they're thinking about your betting what the other players are betting, then you either mm-hmm. have a strong hand or or you're, you're, you're really inherently polarized. So that's why he's like, oh, I'll just call down because what, he's not good. He doesn't have aces. So I just either have them mm-hmm. or I don't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Makes sense. All right. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it.